Hey guys, it's Yishan here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I am a longtime Yu-Gi-Oh fan. I've been playing the card game for a while. Master Duel has dropped recently, and I've been seeing all the content everywhere on the internet. Different decks, different strategies, meta, how to craft your cards, whatever, right? But I haven't been seeing my favorite deck on Master Duel content, and that is Gren Maju, this bad boy right here. Now, if you are one of those players, you don't, you know, no more of this co combo, combo, combo all day, just, you know, summon this, summon that, you know, you got some crazy combos, tired of watching it, tired of people just setting five traps, flipping them, whatever they, they feel like they please, you know, doing all sorts of crazy, crazy stuff, right? You know, Yu Gi Oh has gone so complicated, pendulum or something, I mean, what, you know, I don't even understand that. And I'm a seasoned player, right? You know, it's it's crazy out there, right? And you want something that just goes balls to the wall, mash your opponent's face in over and over and over again. Simple, straightforward, big, beefy monsters. Then Gren Maju is the deck for you. And I'm, I'm going to sell this deck to you. I'm going I'm to go over some this this profile I have here. This is not even an optimal list. You could play so many different things in this deck, right? I'm gonna go over those tech choices. You'll see all the timestamps in the description. So if you wanted to look at the deck breakdown, the profile and options, if you wanna skip ahead to the duels, I will show you also how to play the deck. But basically, if you're not familiar, Grand Maju de Aiza is a old, old, old Yu-Gi-Oh card. This card came out so long ago and it, and it reads like an old card. I mean, look at this. It's got three lines of text, right? You know that it's, you know, one sentence, three lines. You know it's an old card. All it does is it gains attack and defense that you know, are equal to the number of banished cards. That's it. That's it. But this guy can get some crazy high attack points. And I promise you, when you play this card and you get in there and you attack with like a 12,000 attack monster, you will be sold by this deck. It is so much fun. The first time you do it, it's like so intoxicating. You want to do it again. And I'm going to show you sort of maybe what to craft to start out with. Um, and, and we'll get on to sort of the deck profile I'm playing. And then, you know, I'll show you all the different flavors you could play. And, you know, there's even more than what I can mention in this video. So Gren Maju is sort of a deck that keeps on giving. But the main strategy is that Gren Maju Daiza. Now, I'm going to introduce you to Gren Maju Daiza's best friend, which is Pot of Desires. Now, Pot of Desires, banish 10 cards from the top of your deck face down and draw two. Now, usually the banish 10 is a drawback, right? Except not in this deck. In this deck, it just gives your Gren Maju 4,000 attack, right? We've got cards that also banish. Our other banishing friend, Eater of Millions, right? Eater of Millions. Basically, you can summon him by banishing five or more cards from your hand field or extra deck, right? Extra deck is great, so you don't have to use the cards on your hand and field, right? And you can banish five or more. So if you want to power up your Grand Maju crazy, you can just banish like 10, 15 plus cards to make your Grand Maju gain 6,000 plus attack, right? Which is crazy. Then also Gizmek, one of the greatest things in, in, in this deck, which is, you know, if this card is in your hand or graveyard, just banish the top eight cards of your deck face down and special summon it. And and it's also got this like monster destroying effect where you can banish three cards from your extra deck face down, turn one face of monster and it'll destroy it. So basically, again, supposed to be a drawback. This card can summon itself from the hand or graveyard, but right in this deck, it's a benefit because it boosts your Grand Maju. Now, a lot of Grand Maju decks, especially the ones that like to go second, like this one is, and they just want to basically one turn kill your opponent, OTK, one punch them, right? They like to go second. I like to take advantage of the, the level eight capabilities of this card. I like to see, see a lot of like seasoned monster extracts. We'll go over there, right? So with the level A, I like to play cards like Danger, Danger Thunderbird, right? Da There's a lot of dangers. This, this, um, this, how to obtain these dangers? This comes in this emergency monstrosity recon pack, which comes with a lot of the stuff that you want. It comes with the kaijus, it comes with the dangers, a lot of good stuff in there. And so these are guys, basically, you reveal them. Uh, you got your opponent picks a card, or it's a random card, basically, from your hand that gets chosen. And if it's not the one, if it's not the Danger Thunderbird that you reveal, you get to summon it for free, basically. So we'll go over all the dangers, but you got Jackalope, which, when it's this, you know, so, okay, let, let me, let me fast track. All the dangers have the same effect. You can reveal it, your opponent hits a random card in your hand. If it's not the, the card you revealed, Danger Thunderbird, you summon it and draw a card. All the dangers have that effect. They also have a second effect, which is if they're discarded, they get something beneficial, right? So when Jackalope is discarded, for example, by a card effect, right? Or it doesn't have to be by a card effect if it's just discarded. It special summons a danger from your deck. Nessie, if it's discarded, searches a danger card from your deck. Bigfoot discarded, if, it, if it's discarded, it destroys a face-up card. And then Danger Thunderbird destroys a face-down card. Right, so this is like, you know, it's just got everything you, you can want. It, it goes second balls to the wall. We got a couple more things in this deck. I've got the Kaijus, right? So I got the Kaijus. 
these guys are great, right? You know, you're going second, your opponent's trying to put up some fancy stuff. All you gotta do, you use a Kaiju, you can just trip it over your opponent's monster. It doesn't matter, can't be destroyed, can't be targeted, whatever. Unaffected by card effects, doesn't matter, just Kaiju it right over. Just boom, Kaiju it right over. And these Kaijus are also level eight. So if your opponent controls a Kaiju, you can actually special summon a Kaiju from your hand, okay? And so one of the best reasons to play the Kaiju is a card called Interrupted Kaiju Slumber. It's like a better dark hole, basically. Right? You destroy all the monsters on the field, and then you can summon two kaijus, one for your opponent, one for you, and that summons a level 8 to your field, which allows you again to make rank 8 exceeds, and we'll talk about those, right? Then one of my favorite cards in the deck, the last one I think I haven't talked about, is Alpha the Master of Beasts. Would really, really recommend this card, okay? So, Alpha the Master of Beasts. Basically, if your opponent has more attack points on the field than you, you can just special summon it. And it's not even once per turn, you can do it as many times as you want, right? And it's got this effect, which allows you to target itself and other beast, beast warrior, winged beast monsters, but itself, it is a beast, right? Return them to the hand, and then you get to return monsters your opponent controls back to the hand. Now, what's really crazy is if you kaiju your opponent's monster, right, then special summon Alpha Master of Beasts, and then use Alpha Master of Beasts to return the kaiju to the hand, it goes back to your hand, so you get to reuse both again, which to me is just so fun, so so crazy. I really, really like the interaction. Also, level 8, so you can make your rank 8 monsters. Um, you know, and then I've got some staples to round out the rest of the group. I got some Raigeki and, you know, Monster Reborn, Lightning Storm, they came from, you know, those things. Uh, I got a, a Forbidden Chalice that I pulled and an Ash Blossom. So really, really, you know, I just threw the rest of the deck together. Super, super simple. Um, you know, there's so many things you could do, but let's talk about the extra deck first. It's not even an optimal extra deck. You know, this is random stuff I pulled, but I'll show you what you definitely want in your extra deck, right? So you definitely want this card, number 100 Numeron Dragon. Now, you might say, Ishan, how the hell do you summon this card to number exceeds monster as well? I will get there, but basically all you want to know is that you can detach one material and it gains a thousand attack times the number of ranks on the field. Now, it's only rank one, so you're like, Ishan, that doesn't make any sense, but, but you've got number 97 Driglubion here, okay? Number 97 Driglubion, this card lets you take two dragon number monsters from your extra deck with different names or, or your graveyard, special summon one and attach the other as material. That is crazy. Right, because this, this, <laughs> let, let's go over this real quick. This will have one rank. Dragloobian will have eight ranks. This is a number dragon monster. You can summon one of, you can summon this with Dragloobian, attach any of these, um, you know, number dragon monsters as material, detach, activate the effect. It'll gain 9,000 attack already one shotting your opponent for the price of two level eight monsters. So if you want to craft some stuff, I would recommend getting this Draglubian. I would recommend getting this Numeron Dragon in your extra deck first. And then you just need something to attach to this Numeron Dragon. Hope Harbinger is the best because Hope Harbinger also is a good level rank 8, basically, which negates spells, right? But you, you can use anything. You, you know, you, if you have a Heartland Draco, you can use that. There's so many random stuff. Um, and then I got just a bunch of other rank 8s. I wouldn't say Gimmick Puppet is needed. These are not needed. If you want to craft another rank 8, I would definitely go the route of Dingirsu, the Orquist of Evening Star. This card is really, really good because it sends, when, it, when you summon it with two level 8s, it just sends something to the graveyard that your opponent has. doesn't target, right? So it just sends it. And then also, if it would be destroyed or anything you would be destroyed, you can just detach the material from the card instead. Now, what I also like about Ningirsu is you can summon these big spiders on top of it. These are really easy to get because they're normal and rare, right? And, you know, basically, if you just control a rank A that has two materials that are dark, just slap this on top of it. You can slap the seven sins on top of it, which is just, you can slap it on top. It's just, it's just like, exceeds monster, slap, 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 right? And that allows you to make a super powerful divine arsenal double A Zeus, right? Which this card is insane. Would recommend you get this for this deck. I mean, it's, it's just crazy. You literally detach two materials from it and send everything. So by using Dingirsu with these other things that you can just slap on top of it, you'll be able to get four materials on your Zeus to get two sends, which is really, really important. And then of course, you have the Nightmare Link monster. These are also really important staples in a lot of decks, right? Talk about the main deck, what you should craft first. Well, you would cr you want to craft the Grenmaju Bros. Uh, you, that's Grenmaju. That's Eater of Millions, that's Pot of Desires, and that's Gizmek. That's like the core of your Grand Mazu deck. Now, there's so many ways to play Grand Mazu. I think Danger Bigfoot and Danger Thunderbird are really, really good in the deck. Those you want to play a lot. Now, you can play the Kaiju version, right? Kaiju is really, really good. You got Slumber, you got Kaiju. There's so many ways. You can play Dangers, though. You can play with Dangers. 
right? There's more dangers. So like if you want to go danger heavy, you can play danger Ogopogo and danger Chubacabra along with some danger response teams if you've pulled a lot of dangers, right? Those are really, really good because Ogopogo is level eight. Chubacabra re revives your level eights. And then I think Jackalope and Nessie are the best, but I'm already playing those in this day. You can play some danger response teams. Honestly, all really good stuff. If you want to go more on the danger route, then maybe I would recommend a card like Trade In, right? Trade In lets you discard a level eight monster to draw two cards. You know, what if you're, what if you're, what if, what if that's not what you want to go? Well, you can also go with a Golden Castle version of Red Maju. Golden Castle of Stromberg is a really, really cool card uh, that lets you special summon basically a card called Hextrude from your deck. Hextrude is a broken monster. It's level eight. And it can pop a card your opponent controls on the field when it's just once per turn. And it can attack twice. Really, really crazy. So you got like this level 8 summoning machine, right? I've also seen a lot of people, they like to go for, they like to run the Zodiacs in this deck. They like to run, you know, a bunch of Zodiac cards. And you can stack these Zodiac monsters on top of it and make a big Zeus, right? I've also seen other people in, in a similar vein. They like to run Fairy Tail Luna, right? Um, this card is really cool as well because look, Fairy Tail Luna... You can do the same thing that you did with Alpha. You can target one face-up monster your opponent controls and basically get to bounce them, right? And if it's a Kaiju, it goes back to your hand. So there's so many ways to play Grand Maju. Another great tech, and I'm just going off on it, there's Super Polymerization, right? You want to play Super Polymerization. That will also work because Super Polymerization can um, fuse your opponent's monsters, right? And a lot of times if they're playing like a dark deck, Right, you can summon a uh, Starving Venom Fusion Dragon. Right, so this card it just fuses your opponent's monsters, and they can't do anything about it. You, can, you if you have two darks, boom, you just summon that. You summon Starving Venom Fusion Dragon. If they have Elvish cards, right, uh, you can you summon Elvish the Mad Golden Lord, which is crazy. Um, you know, it's you've got these crazy fusions that you can just summon with your opponent's monsters, right? So this is Elvish the Mad Golden Lord. Maybe you don't, you know, you don't like Elvish players. They, they, you, you guys are you're playing against a random deck. The Mud Dragon of the Swamp is a really, really good fusion target, right? So two monsters with the same attribute, but different, but different types. So there's so many ways to play Gren Maju, right? You know, there's a lot of staples you can put here. One card I really like to put in here is, as well as Twin Twisters, right? This card's really great. I like to keep my deck at 40 though, but Twin Twister, you're facing a lot of backer decks. Put a couple of these in. If you discard your dangers with it, you're feeling good. You're feeling good because the dangers will get their effects, right? So that is really, really cool. There's so many ways to play Gren Maju. And that's just what I wanted to get, you know, you know, want to communicate you guys. One of my, my most fun decks. All right, I'm sure I spent enough time. Hopefully, I've explained the deck, what you should craft, what you should not craft um, early, right? So you definitely want to craft the bros first. You know, look at how you want to play Grand Maju. There's so many ways. You could try out my build. There's so many different ways to play it, though. It's what, sort of what keeps on giving. I would also recommend Max C as a competitive card. Just the thing is, I'm a TCG player, and I think as this game evolves, we'll probably see more ban lists. And in the TCG, which is sort of um, the English-speaking players, this card is banned, um, so you can't play it. So I just don't have it on my deck. But if you want to be competitive, I would definitely recommend having three of this in your deck. Um, you know, if you want to play Nibiru so, or some other hand traps to sort of stop your opponent, you know, not against it, right? So those are all things you can do. This is what I've got for you guys. I'm going to load up a game real quick. We are going to go and duel. So I'm going to show you how to play, right? How to play this deck. It's pretty, you know, it takes skill, right? But it's also straightforward. So it's like that perfect balance of like fun, but, you know, like not like, you know, crazy combos or having to interact so much with your opponent. You know, you just let your opponent do their thing and then you beat the crap out of them. That's really it. So we're in here in gold five. Just started, I just started Master Duel like a couple days ago. I guess everyone started a couple days ago. When the dice roll, you always go second. Okay, you always go second with this deck. Let your opponent go first. Let them do their thing. You know, let's, let's let our opponent do their thing. We're just going to break their board and we are going to smash face with Gren Maju. Okay, so here we go. Uh, we got lots of kaijus in our hand. Usually we don't want to see too many kaijus, but that's all right. We got our pot of desires to maybe draw some more cards. We also get that extra sixth card for going second. So lots of different things that could be going on here. We see our opponent, Cold Diamond. He's got a cool little dark magician there. Oh, very nice. He, that guy dances. My rescue. Oh, so he just passed. Look at that. We, we made him go first. He just passed. Well, you don't want to pass against Grand Maju. Let me just put that put it that way. You don't want to be passing your turn against Grand Maju. Boom. Danger Thunderbird, very good top deck there, but we're going to start off with a Pot of Desires, right? We want to see what we got in our deck here. Let's make our hand a little bit bigger. Let's get this thing here going. Oh, look at that. We already have our Grand Maju. Look at that. He's already 4,000 attack. What I'm going to actually do is I'm just going to normal summon him right now because then I will be able to activate this Danger Thunderbird, and if I can just get 4,000 extra attack on the field, 
game's over, right? So my plan is to try to summon Danger Thunderbird, then I can maybe summon Danger Nessie, um, and just mop it up that way, you know? Just just mop up the game that way. So we will see what happens. He looks like he's got a response. Perhaps he's got like a Max C in his hand. Max C we don't care too much about because we could probably just kill him, right? So here comes the Max C. You know, hey, everyone's playing this card, right? So I'm not gonna stop that. We're gonna just try to go for lethal here. Uh, so Max C is gonna resolve. We're gonna try to summon our Thunderbird. Oh, he picks our Thunderbird. That is probably the worst thing that we could have happened there. But we're still gonna go, so now the question is, do we summon Nessie, right? So unfortunately he had no cards in the field. Our Thunderbird was discarded in a in a, a stroke of bad luck, right? So what I might just do is here is, even if I summon Nessie, I might not draw enough for lethal. So basically Thunderbird getting hit, you know, I, I didn't get to summon, I would have rather summoned, but he didn't get to draw either. So it might be just good to actually just go to the battle phase now, right? Let's just go to the battle phase. Let's slap in there for 4,000. And I'm not going to use Forbidden Chalice. I don't want to negate my own monster's effects, right? And I'm just going to set... Uh, I'm going to go to main phase two. Uh, and I'm going to set this Forbidden Chalice face down. And we'll sort of let our... We got Kaijus next turn, right? We sort of made our opponent just discard their Max C. And so, you know, we're still feeling all right. We're still feeling all right. So I got a Forbidden Chalice. His Max C didn't do anything. It just traded for my Danger Thunderbird, basically. Definitely would have Rider had on the field, but maybe he had a Brick, right? Okay, so he's going to go Fire Formation Tanky. Uh, Forbidden Chalice can't stop that, so we'll have to let him search. Now, what could we see here? What have, we, what have you been seeing? We've been seeing Zodiacs, right? We've been seeing Tri-Brigades, uh, lots of things. Now, since he passed turn one, I have a feeling he's playing Zodiacs, right? Um, because that's just like sort of what that deck does. Uh, it plays Zodiacs, um, and you, you know, you want to go second, summon your Zodiac, make a Warbow attack directly, right? So we will see what he searches here. He's really thinking about it. Um, oh no, it's Luna Lights. Luna Light Crimson Fox. Okay, that's an interesting one. I was not expecting that, so we gotta see some Luna Lights here. Um, okay, so Luna Light's coming out. Here comes Luna Light White Rabbit. When this card is normal summoned, you can target one Luna Light monster in graveyards, except Luna Light Special Summon in Okay, so he's not doing that. Once per turn, you can target Spell and Trap to your opponent controls up to the Luna Light monster you control, return them to the hand. Okay, well, I can't do anything about that. So if he wants to return my stuff to the hand, then there's not much I can do, because negating this, it, it doesn't do anything else anyway. Just gonna give it attack. Here comes Luna Light Fusion. Fusion summon one Luna Light monster from your extra deck using. Okay, so he's gonna start fusion summoning on me. All right, all right, fair enough, fair enough. Let's see what he's gonna do here. If your opponent control, you can also use one Luna Light monster to deck or extra material. Okay, so he's gonna fusion summon basically for some Luna Lights. I'm not exactly sure how this deck works, um, but we will have to see what he's gonna fusion summon for. Um, you know, I know this deck can OTK as well, which is probably why he passed the first turn. It's a little bit unfortunate that we, you know, he didn't have any, like, stuff on the field that we could just kaiju. Um, but that's alright. That's alright. We have a Grand Maju here. We will see what he's summoning out here with his Lunalite Fusion. And he's thinking. He's thinking. He's thinking. So yeah, one issue I have with Master Duel is, like, I feel like it allows you to do stuff for a long time. You know, like, you don't have to play too quickly. It's pretty, like, generous. Right? Well, it's just good, because you don't want, like, new players. You know, I, I definitely, like, have taken time for sure. But definitely, like, you know, if someone was, like, fusion summoning like this in a tournament, people will be like, all right, like, speed, you know, let's speed it up. You know, like, what's going on here, right? So, um, like, that's one issue I have with Master. But okay, he's fusion summoning. I, I didn't even get to see what he fusioned with. He fusioned three of them. Oh my gosh, two white rabbits and a crimson fox for a Lunalite Saber Dancer. Okay, let's read this guy up here. Must be fusion summoned. Gains 200 attack for each beast warrior monster that is banished or in the graveyard. Your opponent cannot target this card with card effects. Okay, so I came in for bidding challenge. So during your main phase, set the turn. Okay. Then target. You can banish this card, then target one fusion monster and gain 200 attack. All right, so I, I don't think I can do anything about it. He's going to reduce my attack. I don't know what just happened there. Uh, was that effect of one of his other monsters? Oh, I see. So this card's into graveyard. You can target one face up monster. That's pretty good. Okay, so here comes a Luna Light Perfume. Target one Luna Light Monster in your yard. Special summon it. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, he's going to special summon back the White Rabbit. Again, I can't really do anything about that. So that's all right. Now, don't worry. We've got a Kaiju. So even though we can't target this, the Kaijus will still be able to tribute it. So I'm not too worried about that there. This can return... Uh, yeah, I, I can't... I, again, I can't even forbid chalices anyway. So I'm just going to let that go through. Right now, I'm going to take 3,500 to the face, but luckily I'm not dead. That's all I really care about is not being in a state of death. <laughs> so, you know, we're going to take it. This can be Kaiju, so I'm not too worried about that, right? Uh, I'm really looking for like a Gizmek right here. Level 8 sort of thing. Bigfoot. Bigfoot, I will take a Bigfoot, right? So Bigfoot, as long as it doesn't hit itself like the Thunderbird, we should be in a good spot here, right? 
you also want to check your banish sometimes to see what you've got left. So I've got, you know, a couple grand modules left, nothing too crazy, right? So I'm going to go with the Bigfoot, right? Because I want this, I, I want to keep as many cards in my hand as possible because I don't want stuff to be discarded. So, okay, discarded Kaiju, no issue. I'm going to just special summon this Bigfoot, face up attack position, special summon it out. It's level eight, boom, you have to draw a card, right? So now, oh my God, that's a perfect draw. Alpha Master of Beasts, right? Let me just show you an example of this card. It's, it's, it's pretty cool here. I'm going to special summon it out, okay? And even though this guy can't be targeted, right? So this guy, this guy can't be targeted, right? But, but this card, Alpha, targets itself, not other monsters, right? So it, it targets itself, not your opponent's monster. So what I actually do is I can actually activate this, target myself, and I'm just going to select itself, right? And I'm not going to change Forbidden Chalice. I'm going to do that, and I can return his fusion monster to the hand, right? And now I can also use my Kaijus. I can Kaiju this guy, for example, right? And I'm just going to use it. I'm going to confirm this as tribute. And here comes the Kaiju in attack position. Now, all the Kaijus have an ability that if your opponent controls a Kaiju, you can special summon a Kaiju from your hand. So boom, I can just special summon this Gamma Seal right out since he controls a Kaiju. Now, now that I have two level eights, remember what I talked about, right? It is time to special summon our Draglubian from our extra deck. Okay, boom, we're going to use our two level eights here, and you're going to see the power of sort of this huge attack point deck. Now, when you use Druglubian's effect, you can't attack with any other monsters except for the monster you summoned. So I actually like to summon Druglubian in defense, right, because that is the same amount of defense as it has attack. Now I can activate the Druglubian, I can detach a Kaiju from it, or the, the Bigfoot, doesn't really matter. I'm going to summon out the Numeron Dragon, basically. I'm going to summon an attack position. I'm going to act, I'm going to use the one other thing to be a material. I can activate the Numeron Dragon here. It's going to detach this. It's going to gain 9,000 attack points because of there's nine ranks on the field. I can just go to battle phase now. I'm going to run straight over that Kaiju and that's just going to be game, right? So that's like an example of how the Kaijus can also get rid of your opponent's monsters as well as be level eights for your XC summon. So there we go. We get to show off both Gren Maju and Druglubion in that first match. Um, so that is one match. We're going to play a couple more. Uh, I want to show you bigger Gren Majus. I want to show you funnier situations. Um, and I want to show you breaking like better boards, right? So we get some rewards, blah, blah, blah. Let's return to the menu. Let's get into another duel here. So that was a great example going second, right? You don't want to go first with this deck. So you much rather go, um, you much rather go second. So you basically, if your opponent wins the dice roll, you really just hope they choose to go first. And we're going second, so perfect, right? This is one advantage of also playing a going second deck is that a lot of times you'll get what you want, right? Your opponent's like, well, I want to go first. I want to do my fancy combos, right? And there we go. Look, we got Kaijus, we got Ash Blossoms. Um, we don't have ways to banish card yet, but we'll probably draw into them later or this might get discarded by danger. We'll have to see. So let's see what our opponent is up to here. Mr. J Pickles himself. What is our man, Mr. J Pickles, up to here? Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. what does Mr. J Pickles up to? But yeah, how have you guys been enjoying Master Rules so far? I've really been having, honestly, it's been pretty fun. I, I get to see a lot of like my friends that don't really play Yu-Gi-Oh play this game. And it's so funny to like hear them talking about like cards, like, oh, I like to play this card or that card. Um, you know, they're just having like a blast playing Yu-Gi-Oh, which is really cool, I think. And they actually, they just, it's taught casual gamers a lot more about Yu-Gi-Oh than I think any other effort has ever done. So that is really cool. Hopefully we get some, you know, new longtime players from this. Let's see what Mr. J Pickles is up to. He's, he's you know, he's, he's a bit of a conundrum. Okay, so we're going to see a Phantom Knight deck. Okay, I see. This has been a pretty popular deck, right? This is a very meta deck. We've got Phantom Knights. We're going to see two Phantom Knight monsters out on the board. Um, and then we're going to see probably a Link Summon into a Cherubini, right? That's the big Phantom Knight combo guy there. Um, so, okay, let's see what we got here. Oh, he's going to summon Perform Age Hat Tricker. So he's got two monsters. You can just, I, I don't usually see this in Phantom Knights, but you know, you get, you get to see a lot of like weird, not too optimal decks because of like the, the constraint. It's kind of fun, actually. Like I like playing with like a non, op, non optimal decks. It's like kind of fun. So he's just going to summon three monsters and pass. That's a bit strange. Um, yeah. So if your opponent ever does a weak board like this, uh, we're going to have some fun. And there's our good friend. Remember what I said about Pot of Desires being Grand Maddie's best friend? Well, here we are. We are best friends once again. Uh, here comes the pot. And we are going to, so we could actually use Ash Balls on our, on our own Pot of Desires. I'm not going to do that. Let's, let's not do that, right? Okay, so now, boom, let's just summon out this Grand Maju. I don't want to discard it, right? And then let's just go for the big boys. 
here we go. Danger Bigfoot coming out to the coming out to play. Um, I'm not gonna do that. So I'm gonna discard my Ash Blossom. I'm gonna special summon my Danger Bigfoot. Let's go. Face up attack position, right? Real easy, real stuff. If, if your opponent doesn't put up a good board, right, they're gonna die. So boom. Oh my god, look at that. The combo right there. We use Danger Bigfoot. It discarded our Danger Jackalope. So what does that mean? That means we get to summon a Danger from our deck, which is really, really good. It just summons a free level 8 from our deck. I'm going to Special Summon this Bigfoot from our deck here. And now we can make a rank 8 with it, right? There's so many different rank 8s you can make. Honestly, this is basically already game, but I'm going to just Special Summon a rank 8 here. Um, so let's just Special Summon. You know, let's try the Dingirsu. I'm going to show you guys the Dingirsu. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to select this, right? Now... This is, you know, not an optimal play because this actually plays into Nibiru. By the way, I just want to point that out there, right? If you wanted to be safe, you would just attack for king here. So actually, I might just attack for king here because I already summoned four times. If you summon five times, Nibiru, the primal being, will come down and, and just whack you, right? So if we do our math here, we've got 7,000, 9,800 attack on board, right? Uh, he's got... Oh, he's got more than 1800 in stats technically so actually we actually do need the Dengirsu to go for game so i'm actually going to special summon the Dengirsu but i wanted to pause there for a second just to show you guys what i was thinking of right because you got to be careful right you don't want to um you know play into stuff and we can summon Dengirsu wherever we want i'm just gonna summon the extra monster zone because i can so boom xc summon Dengirsu is gonna come out right and we're gonna send something to the graveyard um yeah i'm gonna send one card my opponent controls to the graveyard Okay, so we're going to send something to the graveyard. I'm going to send this hat trigger because it has the most attack, right? Um, another thing you can do is also summon out these this tarantula, right? The tarantula, you can just summon it over the Dingirsu. I'm just going to put it here, right? And this, this is just giving you more materials for Zeus if you ever came into that situation. This thing's also got a cool effect where you can actually use it to pop stuff that has less defense in it. So I'm just going to do it, right? It has 2,200 defense. I can detach something. I can just destroy all my opponent's monsters. Um, that's pretty cool. And then you can still summon out this big spider on top of it that has 4,000 attack, right? And now if my opponent somehow lives after this, I could use this spider that has three materials plus itself to summon out the Zeus, the Divine Arsenal AA Zeus, that basically would still be able, right, would still be able to send twice, you can detach the Majora's twice. So, really, really cool. We're just going to go to the battle phase now. Uh, we're going to go in here. We're going to attack with our uh, Spider. We're going to attack with our Grand Maju. And that's going to be game over. So, another quick game. Like I said, you get quick games with this deck. If your opponent stumbles on the first turn, you're just going to run them straight over, right? So, okay. That is the end of that duel. Now, it's going to be another duel. So, I'm going to show you one more. You know, let's see if we can get a more competitive match, right? We've been steamrolling people. We've been steamrolling people. So, all right. So, another duel. Let's get a third game. I want to show off the Grand Maju deck in a more, you know, a more competitive game. We've, we've had some blowouts these last two games. I want to get a competitive one for the last one here. My opponents won the coin flip. I'm hoping he'll choose to go first because I want to go second, personally. So, oh, he made me go first. So, we might be in trouble here. We might be in trouble here. Uh, so, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Um, going first is not what you want to be doing with this deck. And, um, you know, this is not really an exception. Uh, but we have Forbidden Chalice, we have Ash Blossom. I'm going to just go with a Pot of Desires here and see what we draw. Um, we've got Interrupted Kaiju Slumber, so we got to see that part of our deck. Ooh, we got Gizmix, so we got a lot of defense. Now, I could try to make a level 8. I could. Or I could try to, I could try to summon this Danger Thunderbird, summon this Gizmek, and try to make a level 8. But I actually like to play defensively a lot the first turn. I really like to play defensively a lot. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to set this Forbidden Chalice, and I'm going to save the Gizmek and the Kaijus for next turn. I've got an Ash Blossom, right? So I've got some defense. Hopefully that'll be enough, especially with the Gizmek, to maybe stop an attack to not let me get OTK here. So um, this is going to be a really interesting match. I've had to go first this game, but I, I drew my Forbidden Chalice. He is playing Super Heavy Samurai. Okay, this is pretty cool. I don't know what this deck does, so he's... Summoning a bunch of super heavy samurai, which makes sense for a super heavy samurai deck. I guess this you can summon itself, or you can equip it. Okay, so you can send both. I don't know what just happened there. You can tribute the monster equipped by the special summon one super heavy samurai from your deck. You can only use effect. Okay, so I think whenever your opponent summons something from the deck, by the way, guys, that's the time to Ash Blossom. All right? You, you don't want, you know, usually it's your opponent that wants to summon something from the deck that is, is really, really strong. So we're just going to Ash Blossom that. Um, I honestly hope he continues to play. 
um, because, you know, that would be really nice. But he's just actually just going to pass here. So we don't actually want to use the Gizmic. Now, why would why would you not want to use the Gizmic here, Yishan, in the end phase? Well, I want to keep it in my hand because if I discard it off Danger Thunderbird, that is going to be much, much better. Ooh, now, okay, so now we've got some power here. Now it doesn't matter what we do, honestly. We can just normal summon Grenmaju. Okay, so here's what I like to do. I like to summon Grand Maju. Now I'm going to show you a little tip here, right? It's only got 4,000 attacks. Your opponent's like, oh, I'm not dead, right? So you go to battle phase, right? That way, if they have a card like Effect Veiler, they would have had to use it now. Now we can special summon our Giz Mekarochi in the battle phase. So sort of give them, a, give them like a little, you know, su <laughs> surprise here. So, you know, they didn't negate it. And now we can just go and, oh, we're already in battle phase, actually. So we don't want to go to main phase two. We're just going to attack directly. There we go. Right, so this is like you know you got your you got your Grand Maju, seventy two hundred attack, just straight into the face, um, and that's sort of the power of Ash Blossom. We just sort of stopped their whole deck with one Ash Blossom, um, and so that's why it's really really good. So even though we went first this game, another simple simple game. I think I'm gonna go with one more game. I think I'm gonna go with one more. I want something more back and forth. I want you to show you when 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 this deck struggles a little bit, but also just showing you that this deck can just power through ranks like this and in gold is pretty cool. But I want to show you guys something really really competitive. So I'm gonna sort of return to the menu here. Uh, we're gonna get a duel in right, and we're gonna see what happens here. I want to get something very competitive here. Okay, I got Yishan versus Meister, and I've lost the coin flip again, but that's okay. I've lost a lot of coin flips. But anyway, my opponent decides to go first. Perfect, right? So, you know, that's the beauty of playing a deck that likes to go second. So let's see what our opponent can come up with. Let's see what kind of board they can put up. Can they put up some resistance to the Grand Maju deck? Well, we've got not the greatest hand unless we draw stuff that banishes cards, right? Because right now we've got two Grand Majus that have that are sitting at zero attack points. So that's not good. Um, okay, we're going to see a Dogmatica, Ecclesia, the Virtuous. You know, okay, so we got a competitive deck. We got Lightning Storm, though, in our hand. That's really good against back row. So if he decides to go for Dogmatica Punishment, we'll easily be able to send all that to the graveyard. But we're seeing a Dogmatica Unity. I haven't seen this before, honestly. I don't know what this card does. This Okay, this is a Ritual Summon. Wow, that's pretty cool. Okay. I usually don't see the Ritual stuff, but okay. So he's going to Ritual Summon or send one monster from your extra deck to the graveyard. White Knight of Dogmatica. I don't even know what this card does. You can ritual summon this card with Dogmatica Calamity. You cannot special summon the monster from the extra deck to turn around. You can blah, 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 blah. If your opponent activates a card effect, you can send one monster from your extra deck to the graveyard. And if you do look at your opponent's extra deck and send one. Wow. Okay. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, so he's going to summon out Dogmatica Maximus. He's going to send a bunch of stuff. I don't have good stuff to send off Dogmatica Maximus. So I'm just going to send the cards I, I won't use. So I'm going to send this. And uh, let's just send, I don't know, this Santa Fond to the graveyard. All right, so we, we're, we're against Dogmatica. This is pretty cool. Uh, this looks really cool. He's playing like a little Dogmatica ritual deck here. Um, so he's going to be able to search another ritual spell or monster. Okay, so he's got another Dogmatica unity. Right, so we really need some good stuff. We really need some good stuff off the top of our deck here. But he's passed the turn. So this one's really good because it can send one monster from it. To grade this card against attack, equal to half the attack. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, okay. So he's, at, he's added Fleur de Lis, and he's actually just going to special summon out the Fleur de Lis. Okay, so we really need some good stuff here. You know, Kaiju Slumber, I'll take it. Danger Nessie, Nessie's interesting because it gives us sort of more, you know, it gives us more draws here. Now, the question is if your opponent activates a card or effect except during the damage step, you can just send one monster from your extra deck to the graveyard. And if you do look at your opponent's extra deck and say, okay, so yeah, I, I don't know if I really like that, right? But we have Forbidden Chalice, so maybe we just go for Nessie. If Nessie discards Forbidden Chalice, it's sort of the worst case scenario. But for right now, I just want to activate the Nessie. Lightning Storm is tempting here, but we're usually not worried about getting rid of his board. What we really need is something that just, you know, that just can, that just does something. So like an Alpha or another Danger, right? So I'm not going to chain anything. Discarding a Grand Maju is fine here. We don't really need two of them. We're just going to summon this. Uh, we're going to summon it in face-up attack position. And we're going to draw a card. Okay, so Kaiju is not exactly what I wanted to see here. Because a Kaiju doesn't quite... Um, it doesn't get me two level eights. So I think, honestly, he's going to change Roll and Locker, which I'm happy with. I think what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to let him send Elder Entity NTSS. I'm hoping he's going to send Elder Entity NTSS. Hoping he's going to pop my Danger Nessie. And then I'm going to go like a Lightning Storm sort of, and then just maybe kaiju him that way. Maybe that's the strategy that we're going to go for here. Um, he's going to send Elder Entity NTSS. 
Um, or I can go Lightning Storm Kaiju then, and then go Gadarla and have a bigger beater than him. There's like a, there's a couple of options here, you know, I'm not totally sold on all of them, but okay, he's going to send a Zeus for my extract to the graveyard. Here comes Elder Entity, he's going to pop my card, so okay, not surprising there, I'm, I can't do anything. So we've got a little bit of a brick here, we really need something that banishes stuff, but we have nothing banished. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go Lightning Storm here, um, because I don't want a lot of his stuff to live. So okay, Lightning Storm is going to come down, we're going to go for Attack Position Monsters, right? So yep, we're going to go for Attack Position Monsters, destroy everything. Uh, we're going to keep this chalice. Then what we're going to do is we're going to special summon the Gamma Seal to his side of the field. Yeah, I'm going to special summon this. We're going to tribute this off. And Gamma Seal is going to come out. Now, if we had one other level 8, for example, then we would be, we would be looking good. But we don't. So we're going to have to go like this. I'm just going to try to get some pressure on the board here. Uh, get a big beater here. Because remember, my opponent controls a Kaiju. And, you know, um, I, I don't. So I can summon one. And then I'm going to set this in main phase two. And so we've got ourselves an interesting duel here. You know, it's, it's an interesting duel. Um, and I'm going to pass a turn. So, you know, we, we need like Gizmek. We really, we, we really want Banishers. We want Eater of Millions. We want Gizmek. You know, we want all of that, right? So that is really, really going to be our key here. Um, we're going to see what he has for us here. Ooh, Dogmatica Nexus. Wow, this is a big boy. You can target four Fusion Synchro Xyz in order to link mod special, and if you do, banish them. Okay, well, at least that gives us some Grand Maju attack points, right? Uh, that's that's nice. Uh, at the start of the answer, our battle special, destroy all attack was Okay, okay. Yeah, he's he's banishing our stuff. All right, all right. So how much how much banished cards do we have? We have three now, so our Grand Maju's grown a little bit. I like it. I like it. Uh, I can't really do anything. So if I Forbidden Chalice this, it'll still have more attack than me. So, okay, he's got a Dogmatica thing. He's going to burn me for a couple, some damage here. Um, but he killed my monster. Okay, so come on. Give me a Gizmek. Come on. Give me a Gizmek. Give me a Pot of Desires. Give me an Eater of Millions. Come on, deck. Danger Thunderbird. Not quite what I was looking for there. Now, can we pass the turn here, right? Can we pass the turn? I think we might want to wait one. We're, I think we're going to try to wait one turn, okay? I think we're going to try to wait one turn because I, I just, if I can live one turn, I might I might get two draws next turn, right? I might get the Danger Thunderbird to draw something when it summons itself. I think I need one more turn, basically. I think I need one more turn. So I'm going to take the 3200 here. There's not much I can do. I might even set my Grand Maju, but I really just need Pot of Desires, Eater of Millions, Giz. Like, I need my Grand Maju to get big. I need him to get big. So come on. Come on, deck. Give me something good. Come on. Come on. Give me something good. Come on. Okay, Gamma Seal. Gamma Seal's not great. Gamma Seal is not great, I won't lie. Now, this is interesting. Do I try to summon the Danger Thunderbird? Because I could, I could. If I summon the Danger Thunderbird, I might get lucky, I might get like a level 8, right? But if it hit itself, can, so can I afford to pass another turn? I'm at 4800, I'm a little bit worried because I feel like if he summons one card, I'm dead. So I think I have to go for it. I think we have to go for the Danger Thunderbird. It's a 1-3 to hit itself. If it hits itself, we're in big trouble. He chains Ash Blossom. By the way, guys, by the way, this card does nothing against dangers. The effect to summon from your hand does not is not once per turn so and ash blossom doesn't destroy so what we can do is just activate it again so you know pro tip for my opponent there don't do that uh don't do what he just did okay so we're gonna summon out the danger thunder but we get one draw so if we draw like an alpha if we draw an alpha we're sitting pretty here oh my god look at that. i called it i called it there's an alpha he comes drolling lockward that's okay i'm not gonna draw for the rest of the turn um now the question is, do we have lethal here? Not quite. His Dogmatica Nexus is pretty, pretty strong. So I think what we're going to do here is we're, we're actually going to go for the Zeus play. Right? We're going to summon this in face-up attack position, right? And we're going to go for the Zeus play. Uh, now we have to be careful, but I think it's okay. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to special summon our uh, our Dingirsu by overlaying these two, right? Because we can't kill him because Numeron Dragon would be 9,000 attack, but he's got a 3,200 plus. I think that thing has an effect that destroys special summon monsters so we're gonna go for dinkirsu yeah we're gonna send one card my opponent controls to the graveyard okay perfect uh we're gonna send this so i just want to show you that this is not a one trick pony deck you know you don't just have to summon um summon this now we're gonna go for the the spider guy because that guy has more attack so we're gonna go for the big spider the small spider doesn't have as much attack so first we have to go small spider okay small spider Oh, I forgot. We don't have a Zeus. Oh, we don't have a Zeus in our extra deck, but we still have our big spider. That's okay. We'll still summon our big spider. We don't have our Zeus. I forgot. This guy, this guy banished it from my extra deck. I forgot about that. He's playing Togmaticas. Well, thank God we at least have the big spider left in our extra deck. This guy's got 4,000 attack. 
Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna go for the battle phase. This has got a two turn clock here. We're gonna save our Grand Maju just in case we have something better here. Uh, I'm not gonna activate the effect here, so let's just get in there for 4,000. Um, and then I'm gonna pass the turn. So uh, yeah, I forgot he banished our Zeus with the effect of his Dogmatic cards, but it's okay, we still got the seven sins here. He's got some top decks that are good here, so we're gonna have to see exactly what happens here. You know, the Dogmatic has got some strong cards. He's set one. Um, is he going to pass here? All right, he might just pass. Okay. Set one pass. Um, anything else? Anything else? Anything else, good sir? Mr. Meister. So, okay, this is a really close one. Um, we're going to need a good draw here. Let's see what we got here. And we're going to get a Danger Nessie. So I think we're just going to try to go for lethal here, right? We're just going to try to go for lethal. Um... Yeah, let's just try to go for lethal. Let's, let's just go to the battle phase and let's just attack. See what happens here. Go for a direct attack and he has nothing. So the spider, the spider has come in with 4,000 attack points just to smash my opponent there. Um, yeah, so that was sort of, you know, an example of a game where we didn't use Gren Maju. So Gren Maju, you know, I hope you saw like both sides of the deck. There's a lot of cool ways to play the deck. Uh, we didn't get to see all the cards in action. I don't think we got to see Interrupted Kaiju Slumber in action. Um, but that card is really, really good. So, you know, lots of things to do there. I want to thank you guys all for watching. Let me know, are you guys interested in this kind of Grand Maju deck? I think it's a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed the gameplay. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to edit it, build some more, or maybe try some other wonky decks. So if you enjoyed, please consider subscribing, guys. Uh, my name is Ishan. Thank you for watching. Uh, it's time for me to go, but I hope to see you all in the next video.